Hey everyone, welcome to the National Spine Health Foundation. I'm your host, Erica Anderson, and today I'm excited to be joined by Tom Denninger, the Director of Market Research and Development at ATI Physical Therapy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for the opportunity, Eric. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, we are excited to talk with you. Um, we know ATI is, is huge across the nation, um, so we're excited to get um, somebody from ATI in speaking with us today. And, and sort of our theme, or at least one of our themes for the month is, is talking about non-surgical solutions to back and neck issues. But before we jump into that conversation, I would love to hear a little bit about your um, history, Tom, how you got into this industry and what you love about practicing physical therapy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've been a practicing physical therapist for 12 years, um, graduated my doctorate in 2008, uh, subsequently went through residency and fellowship. Um, and for the last 12 years, I've been practicing in a multidisciplinary spine pain center, working alongside orthopedic spine surgeons, neurosurgery, pain management professionals. Um, and my story kind of goes back actually, like many PTs, I had some significant back pain uh, associated with being a collegiate uh, offensive lineman or football player. And it was a situation where it wasn't getting better. I'm a 20 year old kid taking 45 minutes to get out of bed in the morning and, you know, gone through a litany of whether it was an MRI or a bone scan, kind of figuring out I have, you know, spondylolisthesis um, and then arriving at kind of a physical therapist office where it was really a matter of getting strong and changing the way, you know, I was doing certain, whether it was lifting or even playing, um, that really got me over this. And I'm happy to say for someone who had some pretty significant back pain in my early twenties, I haven't experienced back pain in a number of years. Oh man, that's so, I think, um, hopeful for so many people to hear. I mean, I know so many times when people are entering physical therapy, they're doing it from um, a really discouraging perspective, feeling like they're never going to get back to the way that they used to be. They're never going to get rid of their back pain. And, but I think that's that's the great thing about physical therapy is that it can bring so much hope. Um, now, you you are the director of market research and development. What does that mean exactly? What do you do um, in that regard? Yeah, as with many titles, I'm not sure it necessarily describes what people <laughs> do on a day to day basis. Um, you know, my role within the company is really to look at our outcomes. Um, so how are therapists doing, how our patients are, are doing and helping program continuous improvement. Um, so we can look at a therapist and say, hey, they are awesome at treating patients with shoulder pain, yet kind of their patients with low back pain don't tend to don't tend to do as well as we would possibly expect. So what do we need to set up for that person from a learning design perspective to really get them? Is this a knowledge issue? Is this a, a dosage issue? Um, you know, how do we set up mentorship and, and some knowledge to get that person to where we would anticipate? Now, what, I mean, this is sort of a broad question, but what are some of the most common problems that you see people coming in with? Uh, regarding low back pain? Yeah, yeah. You know, low back pain is such a broad piece that it actually relates back to the research when we say, hey, one single treatment for low back pain, and it tends to show not a ton of effectiveness because it is a, a very heterogeneous group, meaning that there are so many different things. So in my clinical practice, I'll see folks from, hey, this happened six hours ago where I was picking up a plant and mm -hmm. twisting, and now I kind of feel it to more that other end of the spectrum where it's been going on for 20 years. It's not just my back, it's my hips, my knees, my shoulders, my neck. You know, I've, I've lost my job, I'm on disability, you know, all of these different things. So it really is a continuum. And we have to be very careful whenever we're talking about patients with low back pain to make sure we're talking about similar patients because there are so many different uh, groupings. That can be a matter of diagnosis to say spondylolisthesis versus, you know, acute low back pain, because about 85% of back pain can never be attributed to a single uh, anatomic mm -hmm. source, right? So we, we tend to, to say, yes, this might be a, a nerve compression injury, or this could be a facet arthropathy or arthritis. But more often than not, we just kind of say, oh, they have low back pain, it might be a muscle, it might be a nerve, it might be a joint, we're not really sure. Well, are most people coming in um, trying to avoid back surgery or is that even on the table when you're first seeing people? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, spine surgery is a wonderful thing for the patient that needs it. Um, far too many folks end up there as a last resort. Um, and, and sometimes the outcomes are, are not as we would anticipate. 
So early PT, early conservative care has consistently shown the research to decrease pain, improve outcomes, decrease medical expenditures, decrease opioids, imaging, surgery, ER visits, things along those lines. When we think about most patients with low back pain that don't have a serious medical problem, right? A fracture or a tumor or progressive neurologic loss, active PT is probably the best thing that they can do. So whether they're coming at it from a perspective of, I want to avoid surgery or I just want pain relief, you know, getting them early and often because it is the patient that is scared to move or develops depression or develops deconditioning that really tend to have the worst outcomes. The quicker we can get somebody moving and not scared of their back pain, the more likely it is they're gonna have a great recovery. And when someone comes in, what's like a typical length of time they can expect to be in physical therapy? Because I think, you know, it can be sort of, it seems like a long time when you first start. So what what's like an expectation someone might have? Yeah, once again, it goes back to the presentation, right? We don't wanna look at everyone with low back pain because it's so variable. If you had that situation where it was yesterday and you're working in the yard and you pick something up, ah, I felt a twinge and, you know, it's, it's really painful this morning. That person will likely only be seen for maybe two or three weeks. Maybe we're talking about four to six visits versus if we're talking about that person with the 20 year history and multi-regional complaints and a lot of fear avoidance and, and much more of a sensitivity issue, right? A nocioplastic situation that person might be in care for four or six months because it's gonna be such a slow road to kind of build back all the deconditioning that they've had and also change their, their way of thinking about what their back pain means. Yeah. Um, now, when people are sort of maybe finishing up their physical therapy and you're saying to them, okay, it's been great, like you're moving on, but you wanna make sure like, hey, we don't wanna see you back here. What are some of the things you tell them to make sure you're doing for prevention and for maintenance and things like that? Yeah, we have a saying that you can't go wrong with strong. Mm -hmm. um, so actually someone continue on their exercises and being part of a gym program or continue on their home exercise programs is important. Um, it also goes to say with all the other pieces of health. So making sure they're getting enough sleep and their nutrition is good and they're at a healthy weight, all of those things play into role. But the other part of it is, it's very unlikely that most people won't have back pain again in their lives, right? If we think about point processes and things like that, someone can have the best rehab ever, they can come out completely strong and it's actually pretty likely they're gonna have some back pain at some point in their life. So it's also permission to say, that's okay, right? The other saying we have is no freak outs over flare ups, <laughs> right? So, hey, stay active, avoid shutting it down completely and staying in bed. You know, call PT, call us again if you need to get in, if you feel that way, because once again, early care is gonna be ideal, right? Don't let this linger for three weeks thinking it's gonna get better and then go see their GP who's gonna have them wait another 30 days to see if there's watchful waiting or you know, order advanced imaging because this is the second time you've had low back pain. We need to be really concerned. That's not necessarily the case. The biggest thing we say is stay active, get to us if you're concerned about something. If, if we're seeing something that's concerning, we'll actually facilitate and get you to the right provider quick, more quickly than you would just picking up the phone. Yeah, absolutely. Now, have you guys had to make any adjustments at all because of COVID? Have you been doing telehealth appointments and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, March hit and, and like everybody else, you know, uh, our, our clinics went into lockdown. Uh, we did have some, some, a lot of our clinics stay open, but obviously they were seeing very low amounts of, of patients. So a lot of folks wanted to switch. So uh, since about April, we've seen about 40,000 uh, uh, daily PT visits online, which is mm. great. We were able to scale up. Um, we're finding a lot of folks, especially not with that excruciating early acute pain, do really well with telehealth because it's a matter of exercise and education. Uh, some of the folks a little bit earlier on in their care that have that high level of disability and pain, potentially they need that hands-on care. They're, they're not sufficiently able to get their pain down to allow them to participate. Uh, but, but we shifted a lot to online. As states have reopened, we've seen a lot of that volume move back into the clinics, but we still see about a thousand to 2000 uh, online visits uh, per week, which there's, a number of people who are still avoiding public healthcare places, um, you know, and other ones who are just realizing, hey, this is actually easier for me, it's more convenient. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can, the whole, it seems like the whole healthcare industry has completely had to sort of do a, do a spin around uh, to, to uh, get around COVID as, as has everyone. Um, now, do you guys have any online resources or things people can access if they're just thinking like, hey, I, I think I might wanna be um, potentially getting involved with physical therapy or something like that? Do you have things they can access? Yeah, all our social media channels are great in terms of some daily tips or just some information. I'd also point people to uh, getptfirst.com, which is a site we have, especially in the occupational uh, realm, essentially for prevention to say that PT is a, a holistic path for, you know, decreasing a lot of the expenditures that we see with musculoskeletal outlay. Musculoskeletal accounts for about $100 billion per year in the healthcare system. And about one out of every two persons has a musculoskeletal complaint. That is more than circulatory or pulmonary combined. Um, so it's a matter of these folks probably need care. There's a perception that a lot of these bumps and bruises get better on their own, which they do get better, but they don't get well. Um, mm -hmm. So if you know, we need to get people into care, even for those short stints, like we talked about, to prevent that long-term adverse kind of presentations and, and kind of comorbidities that go along with it. Yeah, I think that's such a good point. You say holistic, and that really is such a an important aspect of all of this, just like, you know, every body is different, but there are so many aspects that go into um, the cre creation of a whole healthy body and the spine especially is so um, integral to every other part of health. So, um, well, thank you so much, Tom. Uh, we really appreciate your time and we appreciate what ATI is doing. Um, and just thank you so much. Thank you so much, Erica.